Hey there guys, this is Flamzeron, aka YouTube's Tosuke. I know I haven't done a video like this in a while, but uh, if you guys remember, and I don't even know if I've mentioned this to you guys or not, but I kind of promised myself, and maybe even directly or indirectly to you guys, um, that every time I would get a new game from Gamefly, I would talk about it, do my thoughts on it, like sort of give my opinion on it. I can't remember what, what the last one I did was, I think it was the Orphan one or something like that. But uh, I remember the last game I, yeah, I actually, I, the last one I did I think was the Orphan one, but then I was like, oh, I got Roddy out of stores and I don't want to do that one, because I honestly didn't like that game very much. But I figure I should, I feel like I kind of owe you guys um, at least a few videos or a big one or something, and kind of talk about the games that I got over the years. I don't exactly remember where I kind of, I kind of picked them from like a certain point and kind of went forward up until the latest game which I actually took back today um but yeah so I'm just gonna go over the games from a certain point up until now of the uh, Gamefly games that I got and so here we go the first game is East the Oath and Filgana for the PSP being an East fan I was looking forward to this game sort of for you know a while now I kinda you know, I didn't really think it was like, oh, whatever, you know. But then it came out in English, or it was announced that it was coming out in English along with, you know, a bunch of other East games and Trails in the Skies. And I had seen Deceased Crab's uh, Let's Play on the original, so I figured, hey, I should play this. And I understand that the remake, which was originally a PC game, had voice acting in it, full voice acting. And, you know, uh, they did a little bit of it in E7, but... Um, and you know, obviously for the translation, they got the voice actors to come in. Uh, the girl who does, uh, I guess Estelle maybe does Elena and I can't remember who, Derek, Derek Stephen Prince does Chester and, uh, I can't remember the name of the actor. It's like Patrick Seitz or something or like, no, uh, I can't remember his name. He's like the, he's like has like a really low voice but you know he does uh doggy this game was fun from what all I, from what i played of it it felt like i was playing uh you know sort of a platforming list uh arknapishtum with you know without the whole three swords gimmick which personally i didn't like in that game anyway so the voice acting pretty the voice acting was solid in my opinion there were no weak points and they even included outtakes of the voices. A bunch of characters kind of, you know, had fun. You know, it wasn't like Berserk where literally half, of, where like there were so many outtakes to where it wasn't, you know, you could hardly take the production value seriously. Anywho, I played this game up to like the part where you go into the cave and the game like froze and like wouldn't work. The game like froze like a mid sort of talking thing, and I'm just like, Ugh, really? So I decided to take the game back the day it was. I don't know if this is with every game. It probably is just with this one, or maybe it was with my PSP. I don't know. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get East Three, or rather East the Oath and Filgana to, you know, to work that well. Uh, but you know, it's a good game if you like East. This is definitely one to pick up, especially if you want more of a traditional kind of gameplay style. In the sense of, like, equipment and whatnot. And this game is, has some pretty solid voice acting, and it's it's on PSP, so you can take it on the go. But yeah, I recommend it. The next game was Dungeon Siege Throne of Agony for the PSP. I had mentioned before that I was going to try and get into the Dungeon Siege series, and... You know, I played the demo of the second game, or a trial version, I guess I should say, since we're talking about a PC game for the moment. It was okay, not really my kind of gameplay, but then I got this one, because, you know, I remember seeing this one, I was like, eh, nah, I don't want to get it. It's like, oh, well, okay, I'll rent it. I was actually surprised. It was more of what I was looking for when it came to Dungeon Siege. And this game, it was pretty good. It was. It kind of had a little bit of a party thing where you chose, like, a party member to go along with you, but, you know, it worked out in the end. Uh, and this, one thing that kind of got on my nerves was uh, that you couldn't actually make your character. You had to, 
uh, choose a character to play as. But that wasn't. But that was fine because the customization was literally just extreme. Like the character I chose was a mage character voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. I made him into a soldier, a guy with a sword and armor, and I actually kind of turned him slightly into like a strong person. I don't know if his stats would have reflected his newly declared class, but I'm by. I don't know if I said stat updates or not, but uh. And uh, he had like a he could shoot a fireball, which you know was kind of out of character for just a simple so sort of sword guy. But still, he kind of he he became sort of a warrior dude thing. The game also froze, so I took it back. It at least lasted longer than East Three, so you know whatever. Uh, but this game, not bad. I'd stick with Untold Legends, personally, if you're trying to play something similar to Champions of Norath. But if you're a fan of Dungeon Siege and don't mind the uh, the uh, style change of gameplay, then this is definitely for you. Especially if you're... Especially if you plan on getting Dungeon Siege 3. The next game was Sacred 2 Fallen Angel for the PS3. This was one of the games I was looking for for quite some time when... I, when I, they first announced something, ooh, this is going to be awesome, this is based, this looks like it's going to be the next Champions of Norath. Well, I was wrong, it was actually not that good. It, it kind of played similar, but, you know, the character creation was more of like an avatar thing, or like setting up an account for a message board or something, where like, you know, if you wanted to make a new character, you had to set up a whole new thing. It was kind of stupid, and, you know, the... At the battle system was kind of stupid too. I think it almost felt like a poorly designed Assassin's Creed where like, you know, buttons are mapped to like, I don't know. I don't think that was necessarily true for uh, Assassin's Creed at this point in time, but you know. Uh, overall, not really that kind of thing. I guess if you like the Sacred series, you should play it. I don't even know if they're making a third one. But, you know, if it's your thing, then, you know, play it. But don't, if you're gonna play this game expecting uh, Champions of Norath or, or whatnot, then you know, you probably shouldn't play this game. The next game I got was World Heroes Anthology for the PS2. I got this game because, or rather rented, because I w went on uh, the Sprites resource and I saw like, you know, Sprites for, you know, a game called like World Heroes or and it had Goku on it, or like Mega Man or something. I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Is this one of those like is this one of like those super crossovers that everyone dreams of that would never happen due to copy, co copyright laws? No, this game just had some generic people. This that was this was literally just like some generic stupid f fighter that was made during the fighting game craze that was like being overshadowed by you know good games like King of Fighters, Street Fighter, and Mortal Kombat. So if you like World Heroes, then you should play this game. But if not, then you know just go past it or whatever. The next game I got was Nier for the PS3. Now, I had already rented it from Blockbuster for the Xbox a while ago, and, you know, I was... I didn't know if they did what they did in Japan... if they did what they did in Japan uh, over here, where the PlayStation 3 version is, is a totally separate game. It, well, it has a different protagonist and the relationship between the protagonist and the sickly girl. Uh, which for the PS3 version in Japan, I, I'd, I'd assume would be a sibling sort of thing. It was actually the exact same game as the Xbox version, so it really depends on your preference of gaming. It's made by the same people. It's made. It's designed by the same people who made the Drakengard games, which are pretty fun in my opinion. But uh, and so in theory, you would think that I'd play this game on PS3, but honestly. I already got the X I already played the Xbox version and I've already made more progress on that one. So if I ever do get this game, which I probably will at some point, then I'll probably just play it on Xbox and you know, if they make a second one or something for PS I don't know. I'll probably just stick with the near thing and keep it on Xbox or something. I'm not sure. It's a good game, but you know it really depends on what kind of console you like. The controls are pretty much the same regardless. The next game I got was Dynasty Warriors Strike Force for the PlayStation 3. Looking back at it, now that we have Dynasty Warriors 7, this game was, in a way, sort of like a pre-Dynasty Warriors 7 battle system-wise, because they, they do the whole move around in your camp before a mission kind of thing sometimes. 
they don't do the whole thing where like the gameplay is blended and like the CG stuff is is blended into the gameplay. But uh, you know, and they they do the weapon switching thing where other characters can use different weapons. It's not used as effectively as as interestingly as it is in Seven, where the weapons actually show up, which actually makes you know using different weapons worthwhile. Um, you know, they it's kind of similar to you know what they did in Seven. You know, obviously this one was the one beginning, the one before, where like it's. Uh, they just, like, switch the mo- they just switch, like, the, uh, models and, you know, throw in the textures, you know, what, or, I don't know how they do it, but, you know, it works, you know, pretty good, pretty good, uh, game, I suppose, um, it was, it was okay, I think, I, I let Nick play it, and he got farther, I think, he played as Sal P, and, you know, I played as Shun Chuan, I played as Shun Chuan, or Shun Chuan, or whatever, I'm still getting used to these, like, Chinese names, which are complicated yet very simple and very lo- very uh, literal when you think about it. But if you like Dynasty Warriors and you want to see something that ties into Ninja Gaiden, because this because this was when Koei and Tecmo became like a team sort of thing, then you know this is probably a game for you. If you if you want to pl- if you wanted to play like a online Dynasty Warriors game, this is probably the game, this would be one of the choices I would say. Personally, I would choose uh, Dynasty Warriors 7 over this one, considering it's new, and you know, at this point, it's really more of a choose a character than choose a weapon, as opposed to this one, which is, you know, it's okay. I sp- it's okay at best. It's sort of like a pre-Dynasty Warriors 7, but still good. The next game is, oddly, another Koei game, Trinity's Souls of Zillow for the PlayStation 3. I was looking forward to this game for a long time, and it looked pretty fun. Like, I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. I didn't play it for long, because uh, I just never found the time to play But what I did play, especially from the demo that I played beforehand, it was actually really fun. It uses a Warrior Orochi kind of battle system where you have a three characters and you can switch between them. You know, but it's a pretty good game. I would definitely recommend it if you like... Uh, if you like Dynasty Warriors, but you wanted to play something different. And it seems like Koei is trying to do something more with with their Dynasty Warriors series. As opposed to just doing the regular Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors and then the occasional Warriors Orochi. And that may be Tecmo's, like, doing, I don't know, like, pressure or something. But, you know, this game was pretty good. If you wanted to play an RPG using a Dynasty Warriors battle system, this is definitely the game for you. And I do recommend it. The next game is the original Fable for Xbox. This game was a disappointment. I'm sorry to say, I understand this game is like kind of critically acclaimed, but you know, had I played this game a long time ago before Fable 2 or 3 came out, I probably would have liked it a little bit more. But just, you know, you know, it's just such a downgrade compared to Di- compared to, you know, Fable 2 and 3, like, you know, a lot of people like it's like uh it's like uh Peter Molyneux doing all these promises, and here's Fable 2, it's like, uh, there's, it's still not the good, it's actually a big upgrade, gameplay and mechanic-wise, than, you know, the original Fable, and Fable 3 enhanced even more on that, so, I mean, if you're, if we're gonna talk about Fable, you should probably get Fable 3 out of any Fable game, but, uh, you know, this game, not that good, I almost feel like I'd rather play it on PC or something. I don't know. Maybe there's a mod to fix the mechanics or a patch to fix the mechanics or something. Didn't play it for very long. Didn't even get past like the whole childhood thing that you know goes on. I'm kind of glad in Fable Three they skipped all that. But yeah, wouldn't recommend it if you're already playing Fable Two or Three and you haven't played this game. You should probably just let this one kind of die out, unless you don't really mind playing a game that's been down that's considered that can be looked at as a downgrade compared to its sequels. The next game I got was Transformers for the PS2. This one kind of has some nostalgia value to it. I remember, I remember renting it at Blockbuster a long time ago. And this game, it was actually pretty fun. This was back when, you know, kind of getting into Transformers Armada. And, you know, it was pretty fun. I don't remember, you know, being too good at it. And, you know, I remember AJ, you know, he would play it too. And we started our whole big, you know, video game inside joke kind of thing.